Alright, today we're going to talk about how to run um, a minimum average partial, that is MAP with SPSS. Um, so MAP is used to, is one of the um, one of the rules that determine how many factors to retain. In short, there are two um, things we can do with MAP, which we are going to talk about later. Um, but to run an MAP, we need to get a data that has a um, the variables we want to analyze. So for today, and like we did in class, we are going to be using the Ozenga data, which is available on um, the canvas. It's, it's already uploaded there. The first thing we do with the data, we make sure it is open, and I would advise that we close every other data file that is open on the computer. We should try and make sure that it's only the data of interest that is open. So right now, it's only the data of interest that is opened. So we need to also identify the number of variables we are going to be using and what the variable labels are. So for this data, like we used in class, it's going to be a variable T1 to T26, which is right on top of this. Going to T26 is what we are going to use. So, because SPSS doesn't run a mean average partial, which I'm going to refer to as MAP today, SPSS doesn't run MAP, so we need to do a syntax, like run a syntax in order to complete the analysis. So, to run a syntax, what we do is that there is a syntax that has been provided by um, Brian O'Connor um, in 19... 2000. So, we're going to... The link is in the PowerPoint presentation of... Um, that we uploaded in class also so we go to that link which is this it's going to open this page then to run a parallel and uh, to run a map it's the same link that we opened for the parallel analysis but now we are interested in map so we're going to click you can see under SPSS this is for SAS um, software this is for MATLAB but because we are using SPSS we go to under SPSS we click on the map.sps so we click on that link right here and it's going to open a syntax for us. It's a very long syntax, but we can shorten it and um, you know delete everything that is not applicable to our analysis today. So the first thing we're gonna do is to go back to our data. This is our data, our SPSS data. Then we open a syntax um, box by going to the file. You click on file. You click on new to open a new syntax you can see data and output but we're going to open a new syntax today so i click on the syntax the syntax box is going to open this way so we go back to the brian o'connor syntax on the web page we highlight everything on the web page and we just copy it we click on Control c or whatever um, short form you use on your computer you copy the entire syntax not leaving anything out and we come back to the syntax box on xbss to paste everything okay so this is it this is it on the xbss syntax so for us to run the minimum average partial we have different methods of uploading our data the first method is to manually impute the correlation matrix matrix of the data because our data is a large one it's um, like how many, it's 26 variables and it's 130 um, participants in the study. So we can impute the data, which is method one. So method two is to have the program read the active file. So because that is why I insisted that you ensure that the data is open before you start running your map, which is going to be the method we are going to use. We are going to use um, method two. So this is what we do now. This instruction is not needed. So, um, can you see some asterisks right here? I'm going to try and enlarge the font so you can see cl more clearly. I would think it's larger now. So, this is the um, instruction, the Lysar's minimum average partial test. So, there is some asterisks that begins every um, line. So we're going to copy from the asterisk and we're going to delete that instruction. It's not needed. We already identified that we need method two, which is have the program read the active data file. So we delete that. It's not needed. But we don't delete this matrix. That's where the analysis starts from. 
the syntax starts from that is the matrix so we leave the matrix the way it is with the period at the end of it okay so now we want to specify the data because we need to remove data um, method one also because we are not using method one we don't want to enter a matrix of um, a correlation matrix for our data it's a long thing to do so what we do is to just delete that from here we're going to delete we are not using method one for this analysis so we can highlight everything from the specify the data for the analysis to um, to the end of one can you see the end of it so we can delete that so this is method two that we're going to use so um, we're going to leave this method two column the way it is then the method three we are not going to use that um, so we're going to because that one extracts the raw data from your computer it goes you have to it's more um, since the data is open that is easier so we're going to remove the method three and we're going to remove method four to the end user specification. We don't need method three, method four. We only need to apply method two, which is the easiest for this uh, analysis. So we're going to highlight it down to end specification only. So we delete that. Okay. So um, we're going to have this, which is the instruction on how to run the map test. We are not going to touch anything here anything at all to the end matrix that is where we're going to that's where the instruction ends well the references which is um o'connor o'brien um reference developers reference we don't we don't really need it and the brian o'connor syntax reference we don't really need it if you want to remove it it's optional you can just highlight the references and delete it so but make sure you have the end matrix right here because we began with the matrix okay so now let's go to method two let's instruct the data to to run our uh, let's instruct the syntax to run our data so we are going to go to method two the first line says method two have the program read active spss raw data file down 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 to the next asterisk we say get CR file is equals to asterisk missing omit variable. So now we this is where we are going to make some editing. We're going to click on this get. Okay, in between the the uh, there's an asterisk that starts the get. Let me enlarge it a little bit more for you. Okay, let me use font 14 this time around. All right, so there is an asterisk that starts the get file. So you're just going to delete the asterisk. You just delete the asterisk which is going to highlight the remaining part of the text it's going to activate this instruction that is what we just did so we are now going to open the variable what variables do we need to use that is what we're going to change for this default uh, syntax they use question 01 to question 12 but our variable we are going to highlight this and delete it and put our variables there which is t1 to T26 and make sure you have a period at the end of it like this and make sure you delete the um, the asterisk that began the get file otherwise it's not going to run so after changing your variable um, every other thing remains the same apart from the reference which if you decide to delete or not so after doing this I think you're good to go to run the MAP text so you are go just going to um, go to click on run at the top of your of the um, syntax box click on run and select an all run all so when you click run all it's going to give us an output table which is this so it's look at the out output table the matrix that's where we began the run matrix procedure it's going to give us eigenvalues and you remember in class we said eigenvalue of greater than one is of interest and we got six um, factors to retain in class so this is also giving us one two three four let me try and enlarge the text and see if we can enlarge the text okay I'm coming OK, 
okay it's not going to enlarge so but this is it so this is the eigenvalue which we've already discussed in class now this is the MAP result this is going to show MAP of um, there, there are three columns is going to show us it's going to show us at point zero one two three four because there are 26 um, variables is going to because there is a point zero there's going to be 25 um, different um, different components that is going to give us because there is already a point zero so these are the different components and these are the squared um, the squared correlation in column two and the fourth power in column three so this is what we are going to look at then under this um, this list that he has given us we see that there is an instruction right under it it says the smallest average squared partial correlation is 0 0.158 that's the smallest partial average correlation so we are going to look at the squared correlation column and look for 0 0.158 so this is a squared partial correlation column which we're going to look 0 0.158 which is right here 0 0.158 is right here so how many factors are above that 0 0.158 that is one two three four so we're going to retain four factors okay so the number of factors we this we're using the um, squ squared um, the squared partial we're going to use we're going to retain four factors that is what we're going to do then there is another another way we could use this map using the fourth power the thing is that the the, the um, squared correlation was an older method of um, of of um, interpreting map analysis it was in 1976 that Velizer um, did this method but in 2000 a newer method which is the fourth power was um, invented which is this other one that's the second instruction that says that the smallest average fourth power partial correlation is 0 0.0007 so we're going to look for the fourth power under the fourth power column we're going to look for 0 0.0007, which is right here too, and we see how many factors are above it, which is one, two, three, four factors. So right now we have, for each of these methods, we have four factors to retain. And it is not always the same output you get for every analysis. Sometimes you may get a lower number with the squared um, correlation and get a higher number for the higher number of factors to retain for the fourth power. It just depends, but usually the most recent learning is that learning is that you should depend more on the fourth um, power correlation. So that is the most. But for this analysis, we got four four for each of it, and even the analysis results, the output say that the number of components according to the original 1976 map test is four, even for the revised is four. But in case of disparity between these two. Um, map test we are going to lean more on the um, revised edition of the map test which is going to give us uh, whatever number of factors it is and also we can also compare with the parallel analysis results and the other methods that determine the number of factors to retain i hope it's going to be easier for you to run this test with this kind of explanation all right thank you